At the age of 11, I had seen a commercial at the time that I found to be very sexist. And, you know, truth be told, at 11, I don't even think I really knew what sexism meant. I just knew that something struck me internally. No one was telling me that it was wrong, but I knew that it was wrong. And I think sort of using that as my moral compass and moving through from the age of 11, being able to see that at that age, I was able to actually change this commercial before social media, before being able to you know, have a larger reach, just putting pen to paper, it really set up the trajectory for me to say, if things are wrong and there is a lack of justice and there's an inequality, then someone needs to say something. And why not me? So I think, you know, if, you, if, you, if I look at that from that young age and then sort of follow what I did in the years after that, it was always about learning more, not just from where I was, but where where else in the world th similar things were happening, a different version of the same thing, so to speak. And um, once I became old enough to travel, specifically to developing countries, and see what was happening abroad, I think for me what really resonated was the lack of education for girls and how that has a ripple effect on so many things. And I think, you know, it's, it seems like a broad stroke, and many people will say, okay, fine, yes, you want girls to have an education, you just want to have smart girls. It's actually much more complex than that, and it really does solve so many of the world's problems when a girl has access to education. You know, I mean, you look at it and you could say, here are the vulnerabilities and the challenges that come about when they don't have access to education, right? Early childhood marriage, susceptibility to trafficking, modern slavery, all of that. But equally, look at all the positives that come out of it when you do have access to education for young girls, how it affects economic development, the GDP, billions of dollars on the table are lost by girls being pulled out of education. Um, and so I think when I look at it from those terms, it would be impossible for me to sit back and not do something about it. And, and I think, you know, looking at my role that I'm very, very privileged to have now with the QCT, just expands that platform to be able to go to 53 Commonwealth countries and do this level of work all across the globe because, again, it is about global feminism. It is about a parity and equality for all of us. And so, yeah, it started at 11, but it still feels like it's just the beginning. Um, so it's very exciting. To men and boys, do we get trapped in sort of almost behaving as if it's only a subject for women? What do we need to just do to do that? Yeah, sure. I think, um, you know, it's interesting because they're not separate conversations. And I think the idea of feminism and whatever stigmatization is surrounding just in that more in and of itself, to Annie's point, making it global feminism changes that conversation immediately. But for men to understand they can be feminists as well. I mean, I think when we talk about gender stereotypes shifting, 
what it means for to be masculine, what it means to be feminine. You know, I've said for a long time, you can be feminine and a feminist. You can be masculine, and I think in terms of masculinity, you understand that your strength includes knowing your vulnerabilities, and your sense of self and security, your confidence, comes in knowing that a woman by your side, not behind you, is actually something that you shouldn't be threatened about, but as opposed to that, you should feel really empowered in having that additional support, that this is really about us working together. That's what gender equality means for me, and having men part of that conversation to say, there's nothing threatening about a woman coming up to the same level. It's our safety in numbers. This is our power and our strength as a team. So, and that's gender neutral, if you really think about it. So I, I hope that men are part of the conversation. My husband certainly is. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer Channel episode. On the 8th of March 2019, the Duchess of Sussex has become Vice President of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. The Queen's Commonwealth Trust is delighted to announce that Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex will today become Vice President of the Trust, the Trust of which Her Majesty the Queen is Patron and the Duke of Sussex is President. The Trust exists to champion, fund and connect young leaders around the world who are driving positive social change, serving their communities and providing hope, work and self-employment opportunities for others. In this new role, the Duchess will highlight the trust partnerships with young people across the Commonwealth and in particular its work supporting women and girls. In celebration of International Women's Day and to mark this appointment, Her Royal Highness will this afternoon join a special panel discussion of female thought leaders and activists convened by the Queen's Commonwealth Trust to discuss a range of issues affecting women today. Lord Gate, Chairman, said, The Queen's Commonwealth Trust is thrilled to welcome the Duchess of Sussex as Vice President. The support and encouragement which Her Royal Highness will bring to the young leaders with whom we work promises to have a profound effect. We are enormously grateful to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for this signal of commitment they are making to our work, helping the Queen's Commonwealth Trust pursue its ambitions right across the Commonwealth and beyond. Nicola Brentnell, Chief Executive, said, We are particularly delighted that the first opportunity of formally working together with Her Royal Highness comes on International Women's Day. This squares perfectly with our focus on amplifying the work and contribution of those furthest away from power. Women across the Commonwealth and the globe often face the biggest impediments to success. We are delighted to have our Vice President's support in helping others to overcome these obstacles. Those joining the Duchess for the unique panel today include Annie Lennox, founder of The Circle, an organisation supporting and empowering women's lives around the world, Adwoa Aboa, 
founder of Girls Talk, an open community where young girls can talk about the issues that matter to them. Julia Gillard, former Prime Minister of Australia and Chair of the Global Institute of Women's Leadership at King's College London. Chris and Jarrett, founder of Let Us Learn and Angeline Muriwara, Executive Director of the Campaign for Female Education in Africa and co-founder of Kama, a pan-African network of young female leaders. The panel was chaired by Anne McElvoy, Senior Editor of The Economist. Also on the 8th of March, the Countess of Wessex is hosting a reception at Buckingham Palace for International Women's Day 2019 to celebrate the vital role women play in building peace across the world. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. And also, please remember to subscribe to the channel. So, from me in Shropshire, goodbye.